Hi, M.K. Davis here. Uh, what I have for you today is, um, is some, some footage that was taken uh, nearly at dark, uh, either in the morning or late in the evening. Uh, let me let me switch back to this other one. See, go down. Okay. This footage right here shows a tree right here, and you can see kind of silhouetted against a little brighter sky. You can see an individual climb up this tree and then shake it violently and then climb back down. Now, I have the advantage of also having additional footage that was taken at a different time from the exact same spot, and it shows uh, uh, in, in brighter conditions what's under this murk in the bottom here. But right now, I'm just going to jog this image back and forth and let you sh follow that individual up that tree. See him? Look at the upper right-hand cor corner right here. See him shake it violently and then go back down. And that's it. You lose him in the murk. And then I'm going to let him um, run natural time. Okay, now just follow him. See my cursor right there? It's pointing to the individual. He goes up the tree. And he begins to shake it violently. Now this is silent, but I do have audibles with this as well. Um, and he transfers to another limb and shakes it even more violently. and then climbs back down. And then you lose him in the murk. Okay, now what I'd like to show you is exactly what it looks like with a little better light. As you can see, this tree right here is it's not a substantial tree really. It's, it's really thin, tall and thin. Uh, so I, what, whatever it is up in the tree, uh, you know, he was didn't necessarily have to be that big to make a big, you know, uh, shake to that tree. Let me go back down to what I was. Now here's that same video in, in ultra high contrast, uh, black and white. Now it just looks like a lot of murk and all that, but just keep in mind that this tree right here is where all the action is taking place. Uh, so the contrast is boosted way up, so perhaps we can see a little more here. I'm going to just jog through it first. Uh, just pay attention right in here. You can actually be able to see it get on the tree and go up the tree up to this point where it's a lot clearer. Let's take a look. Let's go through it in, in uh, natural time. Let me start it here. There he is right there.
see how he's violently shaking the tree right there? Now he comes down. See him reach out and grab his other limb? There he comes down. Now let's take a look at this right here. Just look at this area right here and you'll see that he doesn't go all the way back down to the ground. And he leaps off from about three to four feet up. Uh, and you can actually see him, you know, go down through the air. Okay, here he is right there. Watch him coming down. There he goes. See right there? See him go down? There he goes back up the tree, shaking the tree, see him violently shaking the tree, see him go down, move up and down, watch him just move across from limb to limb, see it? little thin spindly legs but a big chunky little body. Back down the tree and off to the ground from right there. So there you have it, Bigfoot in a tree, if that is a Bigfoot. Uh, I tell you, it's not very big, and you know you can go back to those uh, other, those other more daylight type of uh, situations. Let me just get rid of this one right here. Just take a look. You see that right there? You see that's the tree right there, and you can see it all the way to the ground. It's, it's just not a very big tree. So it's it's uh, he jumps from about right here to the ground and takes off to the right. Um, so you know we, we're looking at uh, you know something not that big, maybe three, three and a half feet tall, something like that. Um, got kind of a chunky little body, thin, spindly looking legs. Very adept at climbing uh, and very energetic when he got up there. Uh, I wouldn't take that to be like he was angry or anything like that. Uh, in the audibles, which uh, I'll include on here, uh, you can hear him, uh, and he's making a, a rather poor rendition of a hoot owl. Uh, and that that should not be mistaken for a primate call because it's not. It's it's he's imitating a hoot owl. Um, there's another one that's out of sight of the camera. Uh, a little after that, that tries to imitate a duck and does a very poor job of it too. Uh, but and you can easily tell it's not a duck. So uh, there, there you have it. Uh, um, now as to you know whether this is Bigfoot or whether this is something else, um, perhaps you can judge for yourself. Uh, it's certainly unique. Uh, in my estimation, and having worked you know with some really good Bigfoot films uh, or alleged Bigfoot films, that this type of footage right here is better than many Patterson films. Uh, the reason why is because the Patterson film was taking, taken under unnatural circumstances where this little f piece of footage right here was taken and with an unmanned camera and what was taking place was the natural behavior of the, of the uh, subject. So to me that's very important. Uh, much more can be extrapolated about the subject from this little film than you can extrapolate from the Patterson film about that subject. Um, what it's doing is, is something you probably would not have done had that, those circumstances not arisen. So, uh, to me, in my estimation, this film right here, much more valuable.